In this video, I want to have a look at scientific notation and significant figures. So let's start off with scientific notation. So scientific notation is a shorter way to write very large or very small numbers. So for example, 5.03 times 10 to the power of 12 or 8.6 times 10 to the power of minus 7. So it's always got to be in this form that we've got one number that's not a zero before the decimal place. And then it'll have this times 10 to the power of something at the end. If the power is positive, that means that the number is a very large number. If it's a negative, it means it's a very small number. So let's have a look at what that means. For example, if we had 2.7 or 2.07 times 10 to the power of 8. If we wrote that in standard notation, then we're going to be multiplying by 10 8 times. So if we multiplied by 10 once, we'd move the decimal place one spot. If we multiplied by 10 squared, we'd move it twice. 10 to the power of 8 means we're going to move it 8 places. So we'll write 207, so we've already moved it 2 places. If we move it another 6, we're going to have to fill those in with zeros. So we're going to move it, add another 6 zeros on. So writing 2.07 times 10 to the power of 8, is the same thing as writing this, 207 million. So let's try another one. If we had um, 5.62 times 10 to the power of minus 7. So in this one, that negative means that we're dividing by 10 each time instead. So if we divided by 10 once, we'd move that decimal place in front of the 5. But we're going to do that 7 times. So moving it once would be there, and then we're going to have to move it another six times. So we're going to have zero point, and then we're going to have six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six, two. So 5.62 times 10 to the minus 7 is the same. Oh, no, I missed my five. Five, six, two is the same as that decimal there. So let's have a look at an example going the other way. So if we had um, this number, and we want to write that in scientific notation, we only want one non-zero number before the decimal point, so we're going to put our decimal point in there. We'll have 1.29 times 10 to the power of, and then we need to figure out how many places we needed to move it. So because it's a large number, we know that power is going to be positive, and we would have had to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven times. So we'd have 1.29 times 10 to the power of seven. All right, one last example. Okay, same thing, we want one non-zero number in front of the decimal point. So we want that to be 1.04 times 10 to the power of, and we know that power is gonna be negative because it's a small number. And we've got to figure out how many places we moved it. So it was 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10 to the power of minus 4. Okay, so that's a few examples of scientific notation. Now we want to have a look at significant figures. Okay, so when we're talking about significant figures, there's four rules that we need to remember. First one is that we start counting significant figures from the first non-zero digit. So in these three examples underneath, even though we've got these zeros here, that 3 is the first significant figure. The zeros are just holding the place value. That 8 is the first significant figure in this number, and the 8 is the first significant figure in this number as well. The second rule is that non-zero digits are always significant. So anything that's in there that's not a zero is counted as a significant figure. The third rule is that zeros at the end of a whole number might be significant, but they might not be, and we can't tell unless we're told. So these numbers at the end, we don't know if they're significant figures or if they're just there holding place value. And the last rule is that zeros at the end of a decimal are always significant. And the reason we know that is because we don't need them there at the end of a decimal to hold the place value, so they must be there because they're significant figures. Let's have a look at a few examples, and I just want to figure out how many significant figures are in each of those shapes or each of those numbers, sorry. So in this first one, we've got 0 0.0512. We start counting our significant figures at the first non-zero number, so that's that five there. Um, and then we've got three numbers there, so then we've got three significant figures. 
This next one, again, we start counting here. Everything that's not a zero is significant. And that zero in there, because it's in amongst other numbers, it's significant as well. So we start counting here, and we've got four significant figures in that one. This next one, again, we start counting the first non-zero digit, so that two out the front. All of these ones are going to be significant because they're not zeros. And this zero right at the end, because it's after that decimal place, we know it's not just there holding a place value, so it has to be significant as well. So this one will have five significant figures. The last two examples I want to have a look at are rounding to a given number of significant figures. So if we have a look at this num first number here, if you are asked to round this to three significant figures, we have a look and our first three significant figures are the one, the five, and the three. So we look at the next number, because it's a four, it's under five, so we round down. So we're going to have one, five, three, but we can't just round it to 153 because that's nothing near 153,400. So we have to keep those zeros in there as place value. All right, this next one, we're going to round to two significant figures. So our first significant figure is that six there. So we've got our six and our five, and we're going to cut it down here. Because that's a seven, it's above a five, we're going to round up. So we'll round to 0 0.0066. Okay, so that's some examples of scientific notation and significant figures.